guys and welcome to episode 20 of my Total War Warhammer 2 playthrough playing as Torox leading the Slaughterhorn tribe to world domination. Today we're going to be continuing that by taking Lothan. Karak is in range to initiate an attack there and Kar can back him up. So it looks like we're going to be doing just that. Uh, let's just level up Karak quick and his Bray Shaman. I'll grab Uncanny Senses, I think. Don't care too much about the spread corruption. He doesn't need the other chariot. I guess we could max out one of these. Curse is pretty good. We'll do that. Alright, let's grab Kadak. We'll put him into Beastman Ambush. And we'll go and attack Lothan, which is completely undefended. Very good. He could probably take it on his own, but we'll bring up our other boy here. Good old car. Back him up. I'm not going to use like all of his movement range so that we can go hidden encampment at the end of the turn. But looks like we're going to have to play it out because it says it's going to be a close victory. I think we'll jump in anyway. Like It looks like I can actually probably get away with auto-resolving, but I don't really want to. There is a, another army nearby, so it would probably do me a favour if I actually played it out. Try and take as little losses as possible. I always find it funny how some of the major settlements have quite small battle maps. Like this one is very small. It's probably one of the smallest. <laughs> uh, it's very, very strange. I don't know if it makes it easier, though, technically, to defend. I, I wouldn't really say so. This is actually quite a bad map to be able to defend on. Because usually you'd want to let them have the walls and then create like a choke point somewhere. I guess technically you could do it like on these areas maybe like across from here and then put arches behind but yeah I'm not a big fan of this map it does look cool though it does look very cool indeed check that out very nice anyway let's uh, absolutely destroy it <laughs> we'll start the deployment I'm gonna pop these guys over here in front of the settlement uh, all of these guys can just go ahead and climb the walls. Uh, a lot of them can actually deploy further up, so we'll do that. My best to go is cannot. They'll have to stay back. Uh, all of these mobile units, it's not really much use for them at the start, at least. So let's just hide them at the back here. If I can. Okay, I'll do. Uh, can these hide? They can. Okay, good. Uh, this big boy can just sit in the middle, help bash down the gate initially. Those two are going for the gate. And we'll, of course, have reinforcements coming in. Alright, let's start the battle. We are going to be up against, like, Lothan Sea Guard. Oh, nice hit there, actually. Damn, that went straight through. Oh, this is a complete mess on the bottom here. And those to move up. Those can go for the gate. Uh, these can kind of stay back. Cool. Uh, this Bestigal herd should probably run and start climbing the walls. Uh, look at them all. <laughs> There's <laughs> so many characters here. 
On the other side, when we go through, we can definitely pit of shades. I'm probably going to do an upgraded pit of shades, actually. Gonna flock a doom to the gate. Yeah, once we break that down, we'll probably start doing a lot of damage. Alright, uh, let's get these Minosaurs start smashing the gate as well. And the infantry can climb up these ladders. Okay, good. I'm going to add these into a group with all of these. And we're going to get in there. I'm going to put Karak in there as well. Oops, didn't mean to speed it up. I was thinking like Pit of Shades would be good, but I guess we'll just do like a level one because I probably want to do one on one side or one on the other. The one on this side seems fine. It's going to do plenty of damage, especially to these white lines. Lovely. I will pop this down at the same time. Great. Going well. I do need to get on top of these bolt throwers. Not quite entirely sure how I'm going to do that. But we are certainly doing a lot of damage down here. These sword masters absolutely disintegrated. I kind of expected them to do some damage to us, but turns out they didn't really do much at all. Okay, let's grab my gobbles. We're gonna go and run them towards the center. And then everything else that's here can go for the white lions. That's a car getting left behind here. <laughs> <laughs> Get over to the center. And then artillery is actually doing some damage. I think my four balls are doing quite a bit of damage here. Managed to get caught up in the middle of all of these guys. Need to get them out of the way though. Don't want to keep attacking them. Don't Bestigors have anti large? I oh, know, just armor piercing. I was say, they should do pretty well against the Silver Arm, so. Great Eagles are trying their best to hold on, but they will not. Oh, it looks like that's over. Okay. Well, that's good. End the battle there. Definitely took quite a lot of damage on a couple units. But overall, I think that probably saved us from quite a lot of damage that would have been inflicted by the Order Resolve. And we captured Law then, so yeah, that's good. I'm definitely going to be putting a Herdstone here, because it does give us bonuses against the High Elves. So that will help us secure the rest of Ulth 1. And I think it also gives us a bonus that is faction-wide. So we actually lost the Goreherd completely, but that's okay, we can replace those. And we'll be putting a Hearthstone there. 
Wonderful. And apparently we can already perform the ritual, although that is probably not the best idea since there's a few other settlements, particularly this one that I want to take uh, next, like the Tower of Nice in here, which has Altharian at it. If we can take him out, that would be good. All right, so Kadak needs to recruit a new unit to replace the one that he just lost. Uh, so we'll just grab that. I think we're just going to merge these, probably. And I'm going to grab another Minotaur unit in this army. I actually have two available. Let's just get rid of that unit as well. Grab both of those Minotaurs. Good. So we could get blessed by evil. I'm going to go presence of more slave now, though, so that we can at least get the hoofed heavyweight, since we do have quite a few minotaurs in this army. All of these leveled up, so we'll quickly do this. I think one thing that would be quite interesting for them to add into Warhammer is like complete uh, this first like you could just like click on deadly onslaught and then it would automatically apply skill points to get to deadly onslaught or you could like click each one you wanted leveled up and then it would put a certain number of points in it automatically so you could just when you recruit a guy initially you don't have to like go through it every time they level up you can just like set pre-aligned uh, like skill plans for your uh, units that would be kind of cool uh, let's get immortality for Karak, he's done well. And the Bray Shaman it can max out the Amber Spear as well now. Cool. That's good. Allo then, we definitely want to add the Shamanic Challenges for the line of sight over all regions in the Blood Ground. And we'll also add the Winds of Malady. What bonuses does it give? It gives plus three melee attack when fighting against high elves faction wide. Uh, it also gives minus six percent cooldown to all spells faction wide. That is actually really nice. Right, with the Morga, we're going to want to move on, but we're going to want to have enough that we can go into our hidden encampment. I'm just going to move around here and we're going to hit an encampment and we'll recruit another chaos spawn actually we don't want to do that we want to get our guy in there don't we there we go could merge these and then recruit another chaos spawn that could be a way to do it Chaos spawn are pretty meaty. Got the horde upgrade here. We do have 28,000. I guess we can. That would also allow me to upgrade to get Jabba Slice in this army. Because I'll probably chuck a few Jabba Slice in with Morga. Because we get the extra weapon strength there, so that would be really cool. Can't wait to get this though. The Ardor of Fury. And then we can get the Abstraction of Zinch, which uh, gives the Aura of Madness ability to Jabba Slice. It's very, very nice. And Regeneration for Chaos Spawn. Improved Regeneration. Very, very nice indeed. Yeah, I don't think we really want to do anything else. Let's just... Move on to the next turn, I think. And I guess we're going to have to defend Tor Anrock. I am almost tempted to put like some money into the buildings there. But we'll see. Uh, let's end the turn. Oh nice, we got the ambush. That's really good. So we've got Karak and Kar. 
ambushing Altharian. Let's do it. So with the Minotaurs plus the leaders plus these gore balls, we'll be able to just probably ball through the front of the formation. I don't think Eltharion is on his dragon yet, so not going to be particularly strong. Phoenixes could be annoying. That's about it. Our reinforcements come in on the opposite side anyway. Um, we could just absolutely maul Eltharion. I think that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to keep everything else over here. So we'll make that a group. Uh, this can be a group. Let's go. I'm just going to go and destroy Altharion at the start, I think. Very good. Uh, let's do Deadly Onslaught. Uh, Black Ball Boxing. We'll go ahead and smack all of these on. Get Tormentor Sword down as well. And then we're going to do an upgraded bit of shades. That should do a lot of damage. Alright, meanwhile, one of these boys need to go over here. Actually, this is the garrison, isn't it? Let's just tell them to leave. Although it looks like my ball of death has uh, kind of worked so far. <laughs> Make sure that they're actually attacking stuff. I'm going to drop down another bit of shades behind that. Down a flock of doom there as well. Just have one of those run. Okay, let's go into the London Sea Guard. I think pretty much all of the melee forces are dead. That Phoenix is definitely dead right now. It's gone. And that's victory. Alright. I don't really have much to run them down. Actually, saying that, I do have these. But I feel like because this is an ambush, we kill them anyway, right? We're going to send to goes coming down. They're really, really fast. So they'll, they'll be able to catch up. Utterly destroy them. Brilliant. Okay, let's end the battle there for the decisive victory. So we'll see, because these technically should still be alive. 
Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure ambushes destroy about, uh, armies, though. But that's good. That's going to get rid of Eltharion. And we're now going to be able to take the settlement he was in as well. Mine source did well. I would like to have seen the damage. I should have checked the damage actually on my Bray Shaman there. I feel like the upgraded Pit of Shades there did so much damage against the Sword Masters of Helmeth. Let's see the damage. Damaged out 30,768. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> Alright. Potion of Toughness. Nice. A good one for him to pick up. I will right, we'll grab a replenishment. Okay, it didn't destroy them. Fine. We get plus 10% missile resistance and charge defense versus large for defeating Eltharion. Oh, here we go again. Saturday coming in for another shot. This actually doesn't look too bad. We play this out for sure. With the Minotaurs being like pretty much full health with the Razor Gore Herd, there's no no chance. They've only got what three units of archers. I could just do this normally and just sit on the walls. I guess we might have an issue of the fact that they'll outrange us. So I might have to like be on the walls and then like bait them back and then move forwards onto the walls again. But that's all of the range forces on that side. On this side, yeah that's fine. Okay so we'll put melee on the right and ranged on the left pretty much. And then I'll put... Where are the big boys? So that this is all literally all range, isn't it? Just one unit of spearmen. So I'll put... Let's see. I might put the harpies over here. With one unit of gore herd. And then we'll put the Bray Shaman over here. With the... Minotaurs, Manticore. I guess the Manticore would be enough to take out the Spearman. But let's do that. Then we can have the Gauls over here. Yeah, we'll do Manticore and Harpies to take out the Spearman. Alright, let's go. Oh, none. That tower. Let's grab that. Already doing some damage there. These towers are so bad though, <laughs> they really are. I guess in this case, like being able to one shot Sword Masters is pretty good. But. Yeah, it's, they don't have like the AoE effect that some towers do. Okay, well, it looks like we're going to be actually be in range to shoot them, so that's fine. Definitely want to be shooting ranged forces. I'll put those there. Those here. Actually, we should come off the walls. And I was just thinking maybe we should just dive into these with the harpies. 
doesn't matter too much. Damn. It was uh, a nice shot from them. Should we get this one to move over here? Kind of sat there doing nothing at the moment. Right, we are hitting those, so that's good. Probably doing on the gate in there. Looks like this should be a pretty simple victory, honestly. As soon as they come off the wall here, we just engage them, and that gives us a big advantage. Make sure these are now throwing at the Swordmasters of Hoeth. Absolutely annihilate those Illyrian Reaver archers with the harpies, so I'll kill them very, very fast. This is really good. The sword masters are pretty much dead there. We kill these. Give them a good charge. Great. Now we kill them off. Got to be a little bit careful with friendly fire, so we'll just kind of hold back. We definitely want to make sure that this force has as many units as it can get. So that will do nicely. Alright, not bad. 141 lost. I'm surprised how well those range forces did, actually. Uh, they moved into range, which was good. I, I thought they would be attacking us from out of range, but apparently not. I mean, if they were, I could have just walked back and then back forwards again. What the plan was originally. But that'll do. Uh, we'll take the replenishment. Pretty important. And looks like that's going to survive, which means it's going to be able to replenish quite well. That's good. Them coming towards us actually helps us out. Into the heart of the dark. One of your brave shamans, one of some renown, wishes to leave the herd and make a journey to the heart of the dark. Do you wish to allow this pilgrimage? Yes. We'll get the winds of magic power reserve for all armies. Yeah, technically forbid it, but there we go. 
Man Blight Tribe have been destroyed. orox has got the campaign map movement range. <laughs> nice. Okay. Now we're going to take out Capitano to Siso. Still. We'll probably just have to play it out. Um, otherwise, I'll take too much damage. Let's jump on in. Against the Vampire Coast. The Necrofax Colossus can actually probably do quite a lot of damage to Minotaurs um, with the ranged attack. The same with these cannons. Everything else, though, will just die to the blob. Alright. Let's charge on forwards. Could go in on one flank to be honest. Get rid of the carronades. Although I do want to get rid of the necrofax. Hmm. And those carronades pretty much one shot our dudes. So I use the thing that took away the Necrofax Colossus ammunition. We're gonna just get into these carronades and take them out. Take those ones out. And then we're gonna give the bonuses. A bit too far, I think. I guess technically we want to do that. I probably should have already done it. We can do this. Get some damage down. Go and charge into the zombie pirate gunner mob. I feel like all of these are getting smacked about a little bit too much for my liking. I didn't realize Torox was on this side. I wonder he wasn't using his sort of king. Does he have a buff? I don't think he does. I guess we got Mantle of Godog, but... I was going to say it's not too useful, but if we use it there, we can smack that Necrofax Colossus down. Those are dead. It's next one. Let's just do a big old trade again. Again, actually, it does do quite a lot of damage. Dark 
I'm managing to crumble them now. We're all gonna get destroyed. I can barely see what's going on down here. This murky water. Alright, good. Yeah, maybe a bit more damage than I would have liked, but it's okay. Not sure I trust the order resolve on that anyway. I think I probably could have got away with splitting my forces a little bit more. Just to make sure that I had maybe like one Minotaur unit on each of the handgunners. Stuff like that, just to avoid like excessive ranged damage. So that's going to be them destroyed. Good. And Torox is going to head down towards Zoth one, I think. I could also send him down here with Morga. Or we could send him back over to the Empire. Because technically we have Malagor up here, and that is about it. We, we only have Malagor. So if I send Torox this way, he can finish off Bretonia. It would be probably faster for me to get on land at least. And then run down this way. Trying to work this out. That'd be four turns, but then coming on here and then going back across would also be four turns. So we'll just head in that direction for now. Um, I might change my mind, but the plan. I right, will just upgrade these. Upgrade that. We'll head towards Sarling Cameron. They're planning to herdstone this. I think it was. Alright, so Kadak and Kar. I don't think they need to stay together. I mean, technically they might for Safri here, who appear to have quite a lot of men. But if we could start like taking some of their land over here, that would be good. You're going to anger Real. Take that. Thank you very much. Loot and raise. We'll take the throne of Surian. Meanwhile, Car can go and destroy Altharian. Let me upgrade those. Double him up. Get the hoof to heavyweights. Go for the Tower of Lycian. Blue and raise. Maybe could have done that the other way around so that Karak got the bonus from Artharion as well. I really wanted to min max. Just keep going with the defense upgrades. These are some beefy boys now. This pendant of Slanesh, plus 40 melee attack and plus 25% speed. That's nice. Alright, Karak also leveled up. It's good that he can go on his own. I'm not sure how much longer that will be the case, because we'll probably end up bumping into some big armies again. But uh, for now, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get all the way around here with them. 
Alright, the Bray Shaman pretty much carries that army. Well, the Karak himself is pretty good. Uh, Morgan's leveled up, nice. Uh, we're one off getting the Ardour of Fury again. <laughs> That's annoying. Uh, let's go Fueled by Blood then. There you go, normal stance. We'll take out the Shrine of Sotek. No. Took a lot of damage there. Oh, that's a good point. I need to think about where I'm going to put the next Herdstone. Putting it here is kind of pointless, I think. Let me just raise an advance. Because that's kind of encompassing this area. I guess I could do it like Pahoax. Wouldn't be a bad shout. Although I have no idea why that doesn't affect this province on the right hand side. Maybe it's because we haven't discovered it yet? Don't know. I'm going to want to take out Swamp Town though. Got to be a little bit careful of this army. It might come across and start colonizing stuff. I don't think it can colonize this because... Yeah, that's covered by the blood grounds. Uh, but if we perform this, it will stop uh, these two at least. I don't need the marks anymore, do I? Is there any reason to not perform the ritual? It doesn't really give us anything, does it? I'm just going to do that so I don't have to worry about watching that. Alright, Ungrol. Hmm. Shadow Hide's always good, so we'll grab that. Alright, two turns until Kalkengard Larder is done. We got 46,000 in the bank and 2,920 dread. How are we doing on Rampage marks? We're getting there, We're close to the next Rampage. I was just thinking whether or not to save this so that I can afford more Minotaurs. In theory, I, I could just put it towards like extra Jabba Slice and Cygors and Gorgons and stuff. That wouldn't be bad. Uh, we could obviously put it towards more Gorbals, Wargors. I was thinking of getting a Wargor in Gar's army. It does have all of the good heroes here. I need to even recruit them though. Recruit hero. I mean, technically we can get another Corbel. Uh, that requires a Pelt Totem, so that would be that one. Hmm. The other thing we can look at, of course, is upgrades. We can get an extra army capacity. That would be a good shout. Uh, new horde armies are raised with building upgrades would be cool. Yeah, I don't think this is a big priority. This is good. And these might be useful as well. Actually, I could spend my dread on some of these items. We'll probably do that. I think I'm going to do this. And I might get the Great Herdstones upgrade as well. The only issue with doing this is that I'm going to have to go through and upgrade them all. So we'll just do it quick. But it does allow us to recruit Minotaurs from any new one we take over. So do bear with me whilst I go through all of these. Uh, can I do it like this? Does that go to the next one? Not really like in order of this list, so that's kind of pointless. That's where I started doing it. And unfortunately guys, it has been my time, so I'm just going to finish up doing this. And then we'll call it a day. 
next time around, we'll just continue in Ulthuan. And with these two armies, it looks like we're going to take out Ulthuan pretty fast. Like, with these two splitting off, both Karak and Kar, they're going to be able to just destroy all of these center settlements, and we won't even need uh, Torox. So we're going to send Torox over here, I think, to the Empire, and uh, we'll probably just use him to annihilate Reikland. Uh, so that should be fun. All right, that's it for now, though. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.